Hello everybody, I've been learning about something cool recently, so I figured I would share some of it with you guys. I've been learning about shaders. What are shaders? Shaders are, are black magic, aren't they, right? They're just crazy, insane things people who know how to actually program can use, and uh, no one else can ever use them. Well, no, that's not true, and I'm about to show you today. Uh, you can use shaders to do some cool, awesome stuff in your game, and uh, teach you a little bit about how they work. So what's a shader? What on, what on earth is a shader? Well, a shader is best thought of as a mini program that runs directly on your graphics card. So it basically is a way of saying to Game Maker, hey, I'm, I'm not cool with the way you're drawing things to the screen by default. We're going to draw things to the screen in this way for a bit. And you do that by setting a shader before you do any drawing, and then any drawing you do will go through that shader rather than than just being drawn in the default way that Game Maker usually does. And then you reset the shader, and then Game Maker goes back to drawing things its way. So what can you do with that? What can you do with shaders? Well, you can do all kinds of things. You can draw outlines around your sprites, you can manipulate uh, how your sprites are drawn, draw them all wavy, change their colors, change the colors of specific parts of them, make them flash. There's all sorts of very basic cool uses for shaders, and because they run directly on the graphics card, they go really, really fast, they're really efficient, because graphics cards are literally designed to do pretty much exactly this. This means you can do things in real time that might otherwise be harder or much less efficient if they weren't done as a shader. That sounds great, Sean. How do we how do we do that? How do we start using shaders to do all these cool, awesome things? Well, it can be very tricky, especially someone new to Game Maker language, because uh, shaders don't actually use Game Maker language. They use GLSL. They have to use a language specifically for writing instructions to the graphics card, and it's much stricter than uh, GML is. It's much more strict. It doesn't let you get away with not including semicolons. It doesn't let you get away with uh, declaring floats or integers wrongly, you have to declare your variables all properly and use them in the right ways, otherwise it gets very mad at you very quickly, and some users might, if they're coming straight from GML, not understand immediately why. That and the syntax is all a bit different, and there's just little changes here or there, and it's just, oh, you've, you've gone through all this effort to learn GML, and now you've got to use this other thing if you want to do shaders. So rather than do a specific tutorial in this video, I well, might do some at a later date, I'm just trying to make sure they're all good, but rather than do a tutorial straight away in this video, I'm just going to show you a shader that I've made and explain how it works, because I think once you understand how shaders fundamentally work and why you would use them and, and where you should and should not use them, um, I think it's much easier to actually start, well, using them. So here's a little ghost. Here's a little ghost I made. Uh, he's a little, he's a little pixel ghost. I, I drew him, and uh, he's very, very kindly volunteered to step up and uh, be a part of this video and show us exactly how shaders work. I'm gonna apply a shader to him that I made very recently that draws a cute little outline around him. Look at that. That's cute. That outline is not drawn in the sprite. That outline is drawn by my shader. Okay, my shader works out where the edges are and draws a pixel line around him, and I'm going to just go through quickly how that works. So every shader is made up of two parts, okay, the vertex shader and the fragment shader. So what on earth is a vertex shader? Well, the vertex shader is easier to understand in 3D terms rather than 2D, okay? Uh, when you have, like, a polygon on a 3D model, it's drawn with triangles, okay? Everything in 3D is made up out of triangles, and those triangles... The, the points of those triangles are called vertexes, and what the graphics card has to do when it's drawing a 3D scene is work out, okay, how to translate each one of these vertexes into a 2D position on the screen, and that's kind of what the vertex shader is about. And then this is where you have the mind-blowing realization that actually in Game Maker, despite us having a, a mode you can turn on for 3D, there's actually no real difference between 3D and 2D other than, like, having a depth for really having a, a depth value. That's really all it is. It's still working out vertexes and triangles in the same way, um, and that's what the vertex shader is about. But we don't need that for our tutorial because we don't really care about doing any 3D or fancy fake 3D looking stuff. It's, it's not important to us right now, so don't worry too much about the vertex shader if you didn't understand anything I just said. Don't worry, it's not too important right now. 
what we're really interested in is the fragment shader, okay? In the fragment shader, what we do is we take all those pixels and uh, we give them a final color, okay? So we take every every pixel that we're about to draw, which has basically been determined by our, our vertex, and uh, we decide what color we're actually drawing to the screen, okay, for each one of those pixels. So how my outline shader works, well it actually, it's vertex shader, it doesn't do anything, it just passes through all the information in the exact same way as Game Maker would usually do it, and we just take that area of our texture sheet and we pass it through to the fragment shader, okay? And in the fragment shader, this is where the magic actually happens, okay? So what we do here is instead of just drawing every pixel and saying, okay, this pixel, uh, according to the texture sheet, it should be this color value, draw it to the screen as we mostly do that but instead what we do is we check every single pixel we compare the alpha of the pixels above below left and to the right of it and what we do is we make the alpha of the current pixel we're on equal to whichever is the biggest value okay so either itself or uh, one of the values around it so if any of those values around the current pixel are 1, then this pixel is also going to be 1. But yeah, so as I said, it takes this pixel and says, okay, uh, are any of the pixels around me have a higher alpha than this one? And if they do, set my alpha to be that. So for most pixels on the outside of the sprite, uh, this is just going to leave the alpha at 0 and fully transparent. But when we get to a pixel that's next to uh, our sprite, uh, it's going to find that one of the pixels next to it has an alpha of 1, and therefore set the alpha of that pixel to be 1. And because I've set the RGB of the background on the sprite to be black, we're going to end up with a black outline. Funnily enough, if I go into the image editor and replace the background with uh, alpha 0 red, even though it appears the exact same in the sprite, when we run it through the shader we'll find we have a red outline because the RGB values are all still there, it's just the alpha is set to zero and it's why that area of the sprite is transparent. After we've done all that, working out what the alpha of this particular pixel should be, we then just pass through the color, as I said, from the texture sheet, and uh, the only change we're making is to the alpha of that particular channel. That leaves us with a fancy little outline shader. So that's how my shader works. I know I haven't covered any of the code in this tutorial, but that's kind of the point. It's not really a tutorial, it's just sort of a primer. I just hope this helps to show you how shaders fundamentally work and what you can do with them and hopefully sort of fill your head with ideas of, oh, if you can manipulate pixels like that, maybe you can do this kind of thing and maybe get you thinking about how you might use shaders in your game. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm actually very new to using shaders myself, but I'm, I've been very excited and learning to do a lot of cool little things with them. And hopefully at some point I'll be able to do some videos teaching you some of the actual code and, and how to actually put together shaders yourself. There's a lot of cool resources out there already on the matter, and I'll link a few of them in the description. But um, the best way is just to have a play around, see what you can do. I don't like to really do videos on subjects until I properly fully understand them and I can be fairly sure that what I'm teaching is one of the better ways of doing something um, but hopefully at some point that'll be the case and I'll bring you some more tutorials on the subject. Thanks all for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye!